Hey everyone, so today we have a little bit of a test. Uh, today I want to try and swap out the PCB on this hard drive with this one and see if we can get this hard drive to work. Uh, and it's not as straightforward as it sounds. Um, but first, I'm going to plug this hard drive into its uh, hard drive dock and turn it on to show you the data we have on it. You see we have a drive here, letter G, it's just called data. It's got a folder in it called junk and just a test document that says this is a test document. So what I want to be able to do is swap out this PCB controller and get right, you know, get the data back. So why would you do this? Well, there could be a couple of reasons. Um, say this hard drive, uh, you plug it in and nothing, you don't hear any noise, you don't feel any spinning, nothing. It just seems to have no power. That could be because of a dead PCB. Um, you know, or you know, if you plug in the wrong amount of voltage, uh, it could fry parts of the PCB component could just fail and you'll need to swap out PCB. Um, all those symptoms don't necessarily always mean that the PCB is bad, but it's a good place to start uh, before having to take a drive apart. And if you have to take the drive apart, you know, you might need to take it somewhere that has some professional tools to get it fixed. Uh, so first I want to do is just unplug or unscrew PCB. And it just uses Torx screws. And then I'll show you that you can't just take this one out. And swap it with this one. Okay, so now we just have the other one swapped in. I'm going to plug it in to the hard drive dock, turn it on. Let's go to our screen view here. I don't know if you just heard the uh, Windows detecting it noise. Okay. And you see we have nothing showing up there. We go to disk management. It looks like it's kind of locking up the machine because it doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah, see, nothing's coming up. It's kind of locked up the machine, or at least disk management. If I turn off my hard drive dock. So let's go back and see if we can fix this. So the reason that that just doesn't work as a swap like this is that every hard drive has its kind of unique uh, firmware or BIOS or what have you on it that is programmed into the BIOS chip. And that's basically what tells the hard drive how this specific hard drive reads and writes and all that fun stuff and that you know these two drives could have came out right next to each other on the assembly assembly line and this would be different you know their, their firmware and their bioses would be different so what we need to do is in gotta find the bios chip which in this case is this chip right here now sometimes if your PCB is missing a BIOS chip like this, then everything is coded into probably what looks like the CPU chip here. Everything would be coded into this chip, and then you'd either need some kind of way to read the ROM off of this chip, or you'd have to 
remove this chip and put it onto a compatible donor and all that fun stuff and that is much harder and not the scope of this test we're just trying to go with the traditional ones right now so what I need to do is first before I go too crazy just get a piece of electrical tape or something and mark which one's the donor which ones are patient per se so that we know so this one is the donor so I'll just put a piece of electrical tape on there so I know the difference all right so what we're gonna want to do is get our hot air station working and swap out these uh, BIOS chips and you want to make sure of the, the orientation so in this case I think the dots the upper left see so that's pin 1 I just don't want to make sure that stays at pin 1 Put a little bit of flux Tweezers ready. Just come with a little bit of hot air and just start from a little ways away just to kind of warm up the area. And then once you got the spot a little bit warm, let's go in a little bit closer. And the chip is off. Now let's put that chip up and away because we don't need it. Now this is our patient's board and we're going to do the same thing with it. Okay, let's put this one down right here because it's the one we want. Move that PCB away. Okay. We still have flux on here, it looks like. Yeah, looks like we might actually have to tin up these pads a little bit, maybe add a little bit more solder. So let's get the siren iron already. If I can get me closer, it's the wrong way. Go zoom. Okay. Southern iron's heating up. Okay, that should be good. Okay. Now we want to get this chip, make sure that the... See the dot for pin one's upper left. I just want to align this as best we can. Sorry, I'm going to have to kind of get my head in there for a second. Let's solder this on now. Focus. Just 
put a little bit more flux I don't think it doesn't look like that flowed all that nicely oh maybe it did but just put a little bit more flux Take a closer look. Appears to be soldered on pretty nicely. Pin one's off the left, okay. Alright. So, one thing I forgot to mention is that when you do these types of swaps, you have to try and match up these boards almost identically um, these ones almost do they have the same number up you know on the PCB they have the same number and the serial numbers almost match I think there's just a difference between well it's upside down there's just a difference between i think let's see one's so3 one's zo3 i hopefully that doesn't make a difference but all right so this is our donor one i want to put this back on Okay, so now we're gonna plug this in to our hard drive dock, hit the power button, move to the display capture, and see if we get anything. So there we go. Now we have data back folder called junk and a test document this is a test document so that's one way you can uh, you know that's how you swap PCB boards uh, if if you think that that could be the problem obviously that would be a good thing to try if you're trying to recover data before having to take the drive apart um, also another things to try are if you see how grungy these pads are Maybe just take a little like um, fiberglass pen or something and just scrape, lightly scrape across it and kind of clean up those pads because if they're making a poor connection they could cause the drive not to work as well and not, you know, the motor not to spin up things along those lines. But yeah, most PCBs, unless it's a newer style one, will have some kind of BIOS chip on it you'll want to replace that with a similar donor PCB and that's how you get the drive and your data back. Um, if you were doing a data recovery, you know, doing this for data recovery, you would just get your data back and then, you know, discard the drive because it wouldn't, I wouldn't trust it for uh, reliability. Your data is more important. Um, obviously, don't try this. Uh, if you have data that is irreplaceable uh, this was just a test and i just wanted to show you that this is how you swap pcbs uh if you like this video please be sure to like it uh thanks for checking us out and we'll see you guys next time